Few things have captured the imagination of mankind more than flight. It's commonly assumed that to achieve it, you need wings. Ford's special vehicle team begs to differ. The words ultra-high performance usually conjure a 200-mile-an-hour Lamborghini or a racetrack-ready Pagani Zonda. The F-150-based Raptor, however, is just as radical. It subscribes to a totally new definition of performance, one paved in dirt, measured in suspension travel, and punctuated by hang time. Okay, so it jumps rather than flies, but this much airtime is close enough. Oh, God. There's something so purely redneck about that sound. But everybody can relate to it. Yes! What's jaw-dropping about the Raptor isn't that it can do 100 miles an hour on surfaces scarred like the moon. It's not that it'll cost you just 42 grand. No, it's that the Raptor is just a plain old production car. The Raptor is available with Ford's new V8, a 6.2 liter with 411 horsepower and 434 foot-pounds of torque. But this isn't your ordinary Raptor. This is the Hennessy Velociraptor 475. Hand another seven grand in your Raptor over to the guys at Hennessy, and they'll transform your 6.2 liter Raptor from an animal into a beast. Hennessy is a Texas tuning shop famous for creating Texas size horsepower numbers and for modifying supercars that'll steal a Bugatti Veyron's lunch money. Hennessy managed to find another 64 horsepower by replacing the intake and exhaust systems and retuning the engine computer. That's like giving crack to a charging rhino. You look at it, and it looks like it's going to be a rough ride, you know, like a stiff, rugged, trucky ride. But in order to be good off-road, the suspension has to travel 11 inches in the front and 12 in the back. That 12 inches, when you turn the wheel, makes the truck roll over on its axis. It's made for off-road. And so when you get on-road, where it's going to be 90% of the time, and the steering is slow, suspension squishy, in a straight line, it seems fine. You can hit potholes, small Kia Rios, basically anything at speed, and it's just a kick. That's it. Hold on, we've got to run over a small car. It's like sitting on a marshmallow. It's just floating down the road. You would think you're in a Cadillac. The only thing that separates this from driving a Cadillac is that every single second you're driving in the Raptor, it sounds like 40 Harley Davidsons are trying to overtake you from the back. If the Raptor wasn't visually disturbing enough, Hennessy's installed a loud button, which takes it to ear-threatening decibels. Anybody walking by can't help but just be absolutely pissed off. It's like hell is broken loose, like Armageddon. It's awesome. In Monte Carlo, you may get some action in a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. In Eloy, you're the king in the Raptor. My reign was short. The Raptor was a heat magnet. I was politely told to leave town. It's attracting attention. It's what it's supposed to do, right? <sighs> when you get behind the wheel of something like this, suddenly the lines of the roads go gray. If you want to turn off the road and go into the bushes, watch this. Spinning. But there are huge gotchas, big holes that can just swallow a whole truck. That right there was the size of a Volkswagen. You sure you could spend 40 grand on a Camry or something like that? Will it do this? 
I don't think so. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how hard I'm pushing this truck, truck right now. Despite being an off-road juggernaut, the Raptor has an unusually plush interior. But it's got these weird knobby gauges where it's like if you have forgotten you're in a truck, they remind you by showing you big mud tires all over the dashboard. And the color-coding interior, frankly, it raises the hair on the back of my neck. The reason for that is I think it flat out reminds me of a PT Cruiser. So the Raptor is certainly a press release car for Ford, probably the most dramatic and radical machine Ford makes, a behemoth that is horrible on the road. It's made for what people don't do, which is go off-road. Yeah, a lot of people would think that it's just absolutely crazy to spit out a gas-guzzling ginormous truck in these times. But it's actually pretty smart because it's a concept car that you can buy and own. Not many people will drive this, but it will make a big impact on the image of Ford. We couldn't find a production vehicle that even comes close to matching the Raptor's outright speed on the desert floor. With its go-fast bits and off-road prowess, it hops along the desert quicker than anything. It's really in a class of its own, so a comparison was virtually impossible. We did, however, find one person who was willing to take on the Velociraptor. But he's not starting on the ground. He's going to start up there, 25,000 feet up there. He's a halo jumper. Halo, or high altitude low opening, is a military free fall technique first tested by the US Air Force in 1960 to help pilots ejecting at altitudes up to 35,000 feet. It was then adopted by special forces during Vietnam who were able to fly at high altitude out of missile range and then drop into enemy territory undetected by radar. This Halo specialist's identity is classified, and since he trains Navy SEALs how to leap from the heavens and kill people undetected, if I even see him, he may have to kill me. He kind of reminds me of Darth Vader. The race will be exactly five miles from start to finish. The Raptor will face a combination of asphalt, rough trail, and open desert. The course is set on land designated for cattle grazing, so by law, they have the right of way. If I mess with the cows, the rancher has the legal right to shoot me. The halo jumper will start 25,000 feet up, giving him exactly five miles of falling. He will free fall at speeds up to 120 miles an hour until he hits 2,000 feet. Then he must open his chute, or we'll be taking him home in a bucket. To beat the halo jumper to the finish line, I've got to get there in just over four minutes, which means averaging 71 miles an hour. That's unbelievably fast, considering there are sand traps, jumps, and cows between me and the finish line. And he's just falling. He's been breathing pure oxygen for the last 45 minutes to rid his bloodstream of nitrogen. If he doesn't, as he climbs, the nitrogen will expand in his blood vessels and he'll get the bends, the same way the diver can. At this altitude, he's also at risk of oxygen deprivation. Have no doubt. This is very dangerous. I was 60 seconds from the most insane race of my life. 25,000 feet above me was my opponent, a halo jumper. Both of us were about to hurdle five miles to the finish line. It was time to prepare the Raptor. Push the traction control, hold it for five seconds, and it flashes, alerting you of the potential danger. Then push the off-road mode, off-road mode enabled. Then pull this little knob to lock the differential. Shifting is in progress and it's done. Five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. I 
I got a bad start there. Halo Man hurtled earthwards, he shaped his body to create the least resistance to the rushing air around him. I had my foot to the floor, and all 475 horses were galloping hard. I was hitting 80 miles an hour, the raptor's giant shocks just soaked it up. Darth had reached terminal velocity, 120 miles an hour, then he used the force to go even faster. The technique when you go over the bumps is actually to lift off the pedals. Because if you hit the gas over the pump, it sinks the back end and takes away the travel. And you bottom out, it's called G'ing out. It's not a good thing. Oh, that was about the limit, I think, right there. The Arizona desert was witnessing two unstoppable missiles heading for each other at 120 miles an hour. Velociraptor and Darth Vader. It was like Star Wars 7, the Jurassic Menace. <laughs> two minutes down, and I had to be behind. But ahead was a mile and a half of pavement. Time to floor it. A little bit of asphalt to make up a little time here. I think the top speed's about 120 miles an hour. There's 115. He's falling like a bat out of hell. And I'm doing 120 miles an hour. Up ahead was my turn into the open desert. The asphalt blast had me back in the game. But no one told the cows. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a heavy beast. miles of track and open desert to the finish line. Every twist and turn, I tried to get a glimpse of the tiny black dot above me. I don't see him yet. But how could I? He was using gravity as his jetpack. But now the advantage was mine. The Halo Jumper had to pull his chute or become Darth Pancake. As the canopy opened, he decelerated violently to 60 miles an hour. This was my chance. No more twisting and turning. The Raptor and I were headed to the finish line as the crow flies, whatever lay ahead. This is what makes this truck badass. Yes! Halo Guy was just a thousand feet above the finish line and I could see the flags ahead. We were neck and neck. I could see him circling above. There was no way he could float down in time. The race was the Raptors. Whoa! Too hot for that one. Suddenly, he threw his parachute into a dive, spiraling towards the ground at 90 miles an hour. Oh! 